I bent a wing spar. <laughs> Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Not always in that order. <laughs> Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, okay. I'm excited and super nervous because I'm about to do something that's gonna let me know whether or not Scrappy is flying this year or next year. So go back in time. I was designing a wing a long time ago for Scrappy. And it's a really cool wing and I can't wait to dive into it. We're gonna dive into the wing spar on this video and we're gonna break a wing spar on this video. But what had to happen is I had to find a spar that worked for Scrappy, the loads, the weight, the G's, everything I want Scrappy to do and nothing existed anywhere that would work for what I needed. And so rather than trying to adapt and add spar doublers and spacers and all kinds of things that still wouldn't get me to the ultimate loads I want for Scrappy, I had to design and engineer my own wing spar, one of a kind, and then do an analysis on it to make sure it could handle the loads. So here's where it gets scary. These spars are showing up in a couple of days. They're, I just got word they're in route and we got to test them. But this is where the rubber meets the road because all the engineering was done in two ways so far. One was on paper, old school, the way I learned a long time ago. The next was on SolidWorks and those tend to agree really close. So it's a start unless I screwed up. But the real test is how good is modern day analysis, FEA analysis, finite element analysis, I'm saying FEA analysis is like saying finite element analysis analysis. <laughs> anyway, we need to do a, a test, structural loads pull on a computer, and then I had to order that and not be able to test it and then design the entire wing around something I haven't tested. And so it made me nervous. So I made a mold to extrude hot aluminum, our own. We have to get aluminum up to 800 degrees. Optimal is seven to 900. At 800 degrees, we started pushing aluminum through a mold for Scrappy's new spars. Now, what's really cool about extrusion is the metal isn't actually molten. It's not a liquid state. It's still a solid matter, seven to 800 degrees. It doesn't go into a liquid state where you could pour it until you're upwards of above 1200 degrees. So we actually had to push hot aluminum through an extrusion, make a spar, and since the extrusion companies were way behind because of all kinds of reasons in the world today, I'm just barely getting the spars and the entire wing design is done and design free. So if this doesn't work, I'm hosed. <laughs> then we'll really have to get back to work. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, they had a minimum order for my spars. So I wanted four anyway, two for the plane and two for testing. Um, but I ended up with like 30 of them because I had to order a whole pallet. So I'll end up making tables and all kinds of other things with the spares, but they're showing up. <sighs> I'm a little nervous. We're going to test SolidWorks. I hope this is good for you <laughs> because we're going to find out how is SolidWorks analysis compared against old school. Pull it till it breaks. And what is the deflection angle and return deflection and return? What does the computer say? And what does the real world say? And when does it deflect and not return to a zero state? So these are the tests we're about to do. They're showing up. I'm gonna start getting stuff ready on the floor and we're gonna break some spars. <laughs> hey guys, hey, guess what we get to do today? We're gonna to break wing spars, front, rear, regular cubs, and Scrappy's custom spar that was made just for Scrappy for the higher load, higher Gs, higher payload I want, and the fact that it's a bigger aircraft. So I'm super excited because I'm building an entire frame on the floor, a jig to bend it and break it. And there's some rumors out there about people wanting to do things like remove ribs because they think their fabric is strong enough to be able to remove ribs and span fabric from rib to rib, and that that may not have an effect on the spar. And it does, but I wanna test the theory for sure. Because as soon as you bend a spar, when it starts to fail, it wants to bow out sideways one way or the other. 
So the ribs aren't just for fabric. The ribs are so when you bend a spar, it has nowhere to go but one direction and not bulge another. So for those of you who have had these campfire conversations about saving weight by pulling ribs, let's put this theory to the test and see if you actually can or can't. But I bought a whole bunch of spars. We're gonna break them all. Let's get to work. All right, got the uh, pipes, about a quarter inch wall. Cut a piece of it off, weld it on here so there's a big radius. Then I'll bolt this to the concrete floor. This is gonna give me a nice rounded edge to bend the, the spar against. I don't wanna have just a sharp point load. I wanna have something more true to if it were bolted with several bolts and attached. So we're just gonna give it a little radius edge and pull on it that way. So I gotta quickly make this, bolt it to the floor, about to work. Okay, for those of you who want to know the size difference, dimensions, real quick, the rear spar of traditional cub, traditional cub is four inches. Scrappy's rear spar will be five and three quarter inches. A traditional cub's main spar, five and three quarters. Scrappy's main spar, seven and a half. And then the thickness difference, about a 0 0.08, 0 0.083 maybe. Um, this will be likely the same. Nope, oh, there we go. This point oh six eight five. So it looks the same, but it's a significant bump up. So my rear spar is going to be a lot thicker because I'm moving from an oh six eight five up to oh eight two five. So quite a jump. When we go up to my main spar, we jump all the way up to point one three five. So it's a significant amount more material, but that gives you an idea. All right, guys, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm starting with a rear spar of a traditional cub. I've got it right here, sitting at 9.5 inches. So I'm gonna write that right here. 9.5 inches as a starting point. We'll pull right here. I put these braces on the wall, simulating if the spar was inside a rib. These spars, if I tried to bend it and it wasn't pinched in something, as soon as I started to bend it, it would just start to bend and then it would bow up. And once it did that, we wouldn't have any real measurement. This mark right here is where it's gonna fold against. This is at 112 inches, representing the connection point of a wing strut. Now I've kept it away from the wall because as I bend that way, simulating the tip of the wing over this, point, this spar is going to bow towards the wall. And if I didn't give it room to actually flex that direction, it also wouldn't be as accurate of a representation because that needs to be able to move, create the arc, and then eventually break. So I've got gap, so this can bow in and out as needed as it flexes. And then this end is just comp compressed against the wall. So it's locked as if it were attached to the airplane. Airplane wing strut, pole cable, chain, and our load measuring right here. So we'll go ahead and crank this. Now it's not gonna take very much weight to bend this. So I kinda wanna emphasize, this is to test how strong a current spar is compared to what scrappy is gonna be and a relative load increase I'm gonna be able to do. On an actual aircraft, you build an entire wing for the FAA, load it up with bags, and that load is evenly distributed. And that allows the spar to go much further. But the fulcrum snapping point is still at the strut. If you hit a heavy bump, that's where the heavy load is, and that's where it will break. But in flight, it's even load. What we want to know is pulling at the weakest link, how far till it breaks, and what is that percentage to each increase in spar strength. So it's a good baseline to check against the computer, see how far we've gone, make sure it's gonna carry the loads I want, which is 
scrappy, anything I can put in the door, I want it to fly with a significant margin of safety. All right, so I just made a quick, simple chart. Cub rear spar, traditional Cub main spar, which is also Scrappy's new rear spar, and then Scrappy's main spar. So I'm gonna start at 100 pounds and I'm gonna write down how many inches of deflection. And then we're gonna note when it bends and doesn't return to its original state, that's its initial fail point. Might still be flyable if it bent in a big bump to that, but then there's gonna be a point when it bends so far or breaks and likelihood, likelihood here is it actually won't break. It's just gonna keep bending. If there's a point we could pull it far enough, which we won't do, you could actually break it. As soon as it bends enough that you wouldn't be able to keep your control surfaces, we're gonna call that ultimate fail or a break is an ultimate fail. Let's get at it. Okay, all right, so here's the numbers on the first bar to catastrophic failure. What I'm calling catastrophic failure is one inch, it's deflected, and this one deflected from nine and a half to 18. So the spar actually bent um, eight and a half inches, and when it returned, it stopped at 10.5. Its starting point was 9.5, so we're gonna, that's exactly one inch. So we had to bend it, eight and a half and it came back within one inch now at, at that point your wing has literally become a twisted aileron and it's the whole wing tip would be moving and at that point you're going to be hard pressed to have the aileron have enough control to counteract that much twist in the wing so we're going to stop the pull right here and call it completely done that was at 250 pounds of pressure at the very end of the rear spar so we're gonna stop here. We're gonna put in the next bar, which is the main spar of a cub, which will be the rear spar of Scrappy. We'll pull it, see how much further it goes, and then we'll do it again with Scrappy's new spar. So I'm really happy with the results. This is very definable, usable data. I actually felt a little lower than I anticipated. I thought we could hit uh, upwards of 300 pounds and, and still be close, but um, 250, we're done. Let's get back to work. I gotta put my glasses on or Ron will hit me with them <laughs> from across the shop. <laughs> I have my glasses on, Ron. <laughs> Nine and 15 sixteenths. All right, let's see what it returns to. All right. Exactly back to the We have no deformation at all yet. Okay, I've got little wood paint sticks that are underneath the two by fours to keep it pinched on the spar so it doesn't twist, so it acts like it's in the ribs. Um, one of them is slid out. I'm gonna quickly adjust that. But let's check the measurement. All right, that's definitive. Now we're a 16th, we're eight and nine sixteenths. So I'm gonna say that the last one did move a 16th because this was definitive, it moved another 16th. So I'm gonna put its new point at eight, return deflection, 8.67. Call that. I'm gonna put the shims back in, let's pull some more. This is definitely at a point where if it did bend and just absolute severe turbulence, you're overloaded in your cub and you bent it, you wouldn't even know it. There could be cubs flying all over the place like this. There is no 
structural um, real integrity damage yet, just moving that much. I mean, about an eighth of an inch over that distance is minimal. And if you let this sit for a couple of days, it might relax back into state. So, but we're on the edge of going into a, an actual failed state. Um, I would call this, you'd never go past this, but we're gonna keep pulling. Let's go. We wanna go till it goes a full inch and doesn't return. I don't know how well my wood's gonna hold up trying to get that much tension on it because it's gonna take a lot, but let's try. Okay, you see the spars ending, bending way at the back over there. Some of the spacing back there is similar to the spacing on a cub as you get further out. Um, that spar's done. We're at 512 pounds. Let's go ahead and just keep pulling. I'm just gonna say what's happening now is I load the weight up and the weight's just falling back down. This bar's done. 500 pounds, anything past that. Now, if I wanted this bar to go further, I can, and that's really simple. It's by just tightening up the spacing between the ribs. So right now, I'm not failing at the bending moment. I'm just starting to because we saw an eighth of an inch where it didn't return. But we're failing at that there isn't enough side support that keeps the spar from going sideways and kinking there, which becomes a catastrophic failure. Uh, if we want to push this a little further, um, matter of fact, I want to. I got another spar. I'm gonna go ahead and add twice as many um, ribs, the equivalent of testing more ribs. I'm gonna take them and put them down that side, which actually would be the correct way to do it because down at that end is closer to the fuselage and that is a little bit tighter. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that up and pull it again. But if you're wondering why there's so many ribs, this is a perfect example. So stop that bow out. But let's add some more ribs on that end. It's gonna be a little tighter. We're gonna pull it to the max and see when the, the bending fatigue moment gives completely out with twice as many ribs. Let's get to work. All right, we're gonna redo the front spar of a cub with the rest of the rib simulation bolted to the wall. So we've got the ribs tightened up from 22 inch spacing to 11 inch spacing to see if we can get a better result than this one when it blew out the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and get my starting measurement, 8.5. Let's pull it. Call it five fifty. Now, this is the good news, guys. A five hundred fifty pounds. The other rib, between the ribs, completely kinked, bowed out, the spar came completely unusable, and it jumped to a 10 and a half, which was, let's be clear, the tape measure, if it says 14 and 7 eighths right now, let me write that down, at 550, it started at 8.5, so I write down on the spar the delta of the tape measure, just so you're clear. So at this point, this bar was done. It exploded out. The ribs now holding up. Let's see how far it goes back. All right, it has deflected an eighth of an inch. We're eight and five eighths. Look at the difference, guys. This is how ribs make a difference. 550 pounds, when we bent at seven and five eighths, it didn't return. It was two and an eighth inches bent out of whack and did not go back. We're now at 550 pounds. It never kinked. And it's within an eighth, oh, and shrinking. So starting to relax back. So let's keep going, see how far it goes. For me, that tells me everything I need to know. For the teeny tiniest fraction of weight each rib saves you, you're giving up safety of a kink spar. Let's see if we can get it to 600 pounds. The 
550. <laughs> 600. All right, now we've started permanent deformation. We are now at eight and three quarters. The plane's still flyable. So if you saw this wing in flight and you hit severe turbulence and bent it to this point, you're absolutely still flying. The wings aren't gonna crack and come apart, but it is deformed and you would wanna fix it. But we're 100 pounds past the other one and that is coming up on a 20% improvement and we haven't blown this far out yet. All right, I'm now lost the structural integrity of the spar. So if you can look what's happening to this, I got it just about to 600 pounds, and the more I pull, it tightens and then falls back down. So I'm gonna tighten it some more. We are at catastrophic failure right now. Really cool to see. I go tighter and tighter. You can see the rib blow out right there between the ribs. We're 100% done. We got an overall 20% gain, uh, which is a giant number on aircraft, guys. A 20% gain by just leaving in a couple pounds of rib. So I'm going to call that ultimate fail at 600 plus as we pass through 600 complete catastrophic, catastrophic failure. That plane's not flying, it's coming out, and you better hope you have a BRS parachute at that point, so, because that's a bad day. We got one more to pull. I'm gonna yank this out of here, throw in a scrappy spar. I'm super excited to see this number. All right, guys, just pulling this pin out. It's kind of fun to see. The point at which the spar failed, we're doing no damage at the bolt point through the thin sp um, spot on the spar, but, this is an actual normal loading. You're actually pulling from one fixed point. We'll have a big giant bracket that has multiple bolt points. And that I'm not worried about at all. Um, every bolt going through it has more shear load capacity than four times the max gross weight of this aircraft. And there'll be multiple bolts. But it is kind of neat to see that we haven't even deformed the thin metal as we're pulling here. And the spar lets go. So just kind of fun little things to see. The other thing I thought was really cool is if you look right here, you might think it would bend here. Um, I put the round bar so that I could disperse the load and see where it bent, and I'm glad to see it wasn't here. Even though if it was here, we would still have data at what point, how much stronger one spar is over another, but it's kind of neat to see that it failed elsewhere. So let's put in Scrappy's one-of-a-kind spar and cross our fingers. Back to work. Pulling Scrappy's main spar now. I'm going to do a starting point right there. Uh, nine and three eight. Let's pull. Glasses. Turn to zero. When I say return to zero, I mean return to the starting point. Okay, let's go to 400 pounds. Well, I went a little far. It's 420. Don't make a joke about that. <laughs> uh, turn in seven eighths. Turn to zero. We have now just equaled the better of the two main spars of a cup test at zero. We just did 800 pounds, which is double that weight. We turned to zero. We have officially doubled the strength of the main spar, which has already given Scrappy several thousand pounds of payload. By the way, I'm gonna get excited. <laughs> 
Guys, I just hit the target. 800 is where I needed to be on this engineer's bar for Scrappy. I put a little buffer on top of that. Scrappy's gonna weigh a 2,000 pound cub. It's a heavy cub. Most cubs have a 2,000 pound gross weight. If I go to 4,000 pounds, that's double. Instead of having 1,000 pounds of payload, I have 2,000 pounds of payload at this point. I don't know how I'd ever get it in the plane, but that's what I wanted, a plane that I can't get enough in it. I built the tail to handle it. I got a way broader CG envelope and the horsepower to get it off. So, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a wing because I now already know, woo! <laughs> I'm officially done, but let's pull it till it fails. I couldn't be happier, guys. Success. Now let's see how far it will go. Full return, we're at zero. We are now going beyond the 2,000 pound payload. Now guys, as I tighten this up, I'm hitting over the 1,000 mark. You can't just increase the spars front and rear, which is what I've just done, to hit it. Everything else, the brackets, the struts, the bolts, the tie-in, the weld points. You have to chase down every component to its weakest link. And on Scrappy, the weakest link is actually whatever this spar is, because all my bolt points, my attach points, my struts, everything is the magnitude of multiple times over the max I'll ever get out of this spar. So everything has been changed to match. It's not just a spar. So nobody thinks you can just increase the spar and then have the plane fly it. So but I'm excited. This was a big milestone because it took months to get that aluminum extruded for me. And if it didn't pass, I'd be starting over with a new extrusion. We're past. And here comes our thousand. Ten and three eighths, full return to zero. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm gonna sleep good tonight. Oh my gosh. Means I'm gonna have some wings. The rest of the designs can stay as is. Now we're just getting stupid. Cause this is crazy. Ooh, we finally bent it a 16th of an inch. If we wiggle it, it's exactly a 16th of an inch. I don't know if it would relax back. We've officially hit the first onset, which would be, isn't enough for me to even have a tip like I made on those. So we're gonna mark that. One sixteenth of an inch. And the best news, I gotta turn the page. I ran out of room. Let's go for 1,200 pounds. Fifteen hundred. We're at fifteen and Three eighths. Three eighths. We finally hit a quarter inch. About 1,500 pounds. 1,600 pounds on the very tip of the wing. 15 and three quarters. If you look at this right here, when we finally hit a quarter inch deflection on this one, we were at 550 pounds. The quarter inch deflection on this one, 1,500 pounds, almost 300%. That'll do it. <laughs> We're finally at 3 eighths of an inch deflection. 1,600 pounds, let's go for 1,700. It's getting harder to pull. Come on, break. I'm getting tired. <laughs> 16. Ooh, there it went. I think it just went. All right, you're done. Come look at this scale fall. My scale is falling, not going up. We officially broke at 1,675 pounds. Kink the spar. And the weight is falling the other way. I just released the tension from the 1,675 pound max when it bent and let go. 
and started reducing. I went down to 11 and 7 eighths. So if I look at that number, I'll put that nine and, oh yes, I count with my finger. <laughs> it's not that far off of some of the others. What's really amazing is that the deflection at ultimate failure as a percentage was pretty much in line. It's just the amount of weight it could carry is 300% more. Let's just summarize it. 400 pounds at return to zero on this one. We were at zero at 800, which is 200%. We stayed zero, not the ultimate failure, to over a thousand pounds, which is 250% of my target, which is a thousand pounds above my 2,000 pound payload I wanted. It's a 3,000 pound payload with return to zero. I don't think I could ever fit 3,000 pounds of payload, even with the massive gas tank I have in here to go 10 hours of fuel on board. Um, I can't get it. I think I'd have to, I need to go to Alaska for hunting gold bars. <laughs> Fill it clear full. Oh my gosh. It's a good day. Woo! What's fun to think about is how much weight you can hang on the tip of Strappy, literally at the tip. So if you were worried about whether or not you'd hang your hammock up, don't, even if it's at the tip, not at the wing strut, because at the tip of Strappy, with a full return to zero, no damage to the spar at all, I can hang a carbon cub, motor and all, all three wheels off the ground, off each wing tip of Strappy and not hurt the wing spars. That doesn't count the additional support of the rear spar that's also a couple hundred percent stronger for my rear spar. So I don't see any reason I'd try and hang a cup for my wing tip, but I could. <laughs> this is really cool. Here's some old modeling. When we decided to order the spar, this is SolidWorks vent testing. And then I had a graph. I got another graph here. The graph that I used to figure out the desired load limits and uh, I overlaid the testing we did on the floor with the original design that we engineered the spar off of. And what's really amazing, and I'll throw it up on the screen, is to look, my test shows my ticks kind of go up and down and up and down, but they're so close together, the computer model and the floor test model are literally within 2% on almost every single one. There's a couple of outliers, one right there, one right there. And those are when I was ratcheting, sometimes I ratcheted it just a little too far. Instead of 600 pounds, I took it to 625. But it showed every one of those outliners and overlaid on SolidWorks, they chase each other all the way up on all three spars. So. I'm blown away. I mean, technology has made designing aircraft so much better, so much safer. So good job, SolidWorks. I am further, even more a fan than I already was. All right, guys, <laughs> I got a crazy idea. I was just thinking about what am I gonna do with all these bent up spars, including the scrappy spar right there. And I really enjoy playing with these things. So I think what I'll do, and I hope someone may have interest. If not, it's, I'm gonna try it anyway. I think it could be fun is I'm gonna laser cut all this up into nice rounded clean edge pieces, put the scrappy logo across this, my name on it, maybe I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and sign the back, I don't know if anyone cares, but I'll sign it in case someone does. And then I'm gonna anodize them scrappy colors. Okay guys, I got them all anodized and done. Orange, black, silver. So this is the set, Scrappy's spar, traditional cup spar, traditional cup rear spar, and then Scrappy's rear spar is gonna be a traditional cup. Front spar, I'm super pumped about it. I think they turned out really, really cool. Uh, unfortunately, because I'm not doing mass quantities, it costs quite a bit more than I thought to individually water jet cut a bunch of these and then send them off to anodizers and get them back. So um, uh, the best I can sell these for is 50 bucks a set. I actually won't make any money on it, but I thought some of you might think it'd be fun to have these. I'll sign the back, I'll put a, uh, a picture, a paper picture of Scrappy in it or something, maybe put the stats of each of the pull tests. But um, it's really just about giving back, sharing aviation. If for some reason 
a lot of you bought this little set of three spars of scrappy from me uh, and there was a little bit of money to be made i'll just take that money put it right back into the program of giving away free dracos uh, to everybody so i always just want to give it back but it turned out really really cool i really really like it i hope you guys do too um, this is just a limited thing i only have a few and then when they're gone unless for some reason we got some absurd order uh, I could make more, but likely they're just going to be a limited amount. And uh, when they're done, they're done. I hope you like it. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. Scrappy's a heavy cub. Let's make a crazy wing for it. I am officially done bending my spar. Woo! <laughs> Let's get back to work. <laughs> 